Hi. Hola. Hi, here is Mr. Dose. This is Michael Bradley. Hey, I'm Memphis. Hey. Hola. Hello. I'm here with Soccer.com. 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 And I'm talking with my friends at Soccer.com. See you soon. Hey guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you my first impressions plus on feet video of the brand new Under Armour Spotlight in the Rocket Red colorway. Now included with the shoes inside the box are two sets of extra laces. So you have the black ones already on the shoes as you can see and then in two separate plastic bags you get a set of neon yellow ones and Rocket Red laces. Again to kind of match the shoes and give you a little bit of customization out of the box. It's nice that they do include the extra laces. Of course, aside from the laces, you get the shoes themselves. Now this is essentially a replacement for the Clutch Fit model from Under Armour. Obviously it doesn't have the Clutch Fit name. It's now called the Spotlight, but the sole plate, the stud pattern, the heel counter, as well as the one piece speed form construction of this shoe is maintained where the upper is more or less completely redesigned when compared to the Clutch Fits. Now this is a very interesting shoe. Under Armour is a super underrated brand when it comes to soccer cleats slash football boots. They've been making some pretty good stuff for the last couple of years, but they just haven't gained popularity mainly because people like to stick to the, uh, I guess, more storied brands in the soccer world like Nike as well as Adidas. So in today's video, we're gonna be going over all of the tech specs and performance features of the new Under Armour Spotlight, which is a very interesting shoe that I'm excited to try out. So if you do wanna learn more, stick around, watch the entire video. If you're interested in a pair of these for yourself, you can check out the review page on my website. That'll be the very first link down below in the description of this video. On that page, you'll find Buy It Now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes. where you will be able to pick these guys up below their normal $220 retail price. So again, if you're interested in a pair, first link down below, go ahead and check it out. And with that being said, let's get right into the review. To start things off, let's talk tech specs and performance features with the Under Armour Spotlight. Now, I will say the tech specs that they've released for the Under Armour Spotlight aren't the greatest in regards to explaining what exactly they've done with the upper, which really is the only change that they've made to this shoe coming from the shoe that it replaces, the Under Armour Speed Form, which the sole plate, the stud pattern, and the entire inside of the shoe is, like I said, just a direct carryover from that previous model. Now the upper is obviously a synthetic material, and admittedly it does look kind of cheap. It doesn't look like the synthetic you would find on a $220 shoe, especially here on the medial side, and I'm still not sure why they chose this particular design. We'll talk about that in just a second, but with that said, the material itself does actually feel quite nice and doesn't feel cheap to the touch or on your foot. Um, which obviously is a very important thing. So with this particular shoe, the, the tech specs are listed as following. Lightweight synthetic upper with secondary stretch compression. I don't really know what that means. They don't really specify anything further than that. Um, but basically what I can get from this shoe is that it's a synthetic material that does have a textile base. It is on the thinner side and it does have an internal liner. So you can see on the side, it's definitely pretty thin, the red part of the synthetic. Then you do have the kind of synthetic suede liner on the inside. Um, the red part is the main portion of the upper that is thin, but not overly thin. If I had to compare it to something else out there, I'd probably compare it to, uh, I guess maybe something like an X16.1, but just a touch less padded than that particular shoe. But that's kind of the type of synthetic that it reminds me of. If, if again, I'm comparing it to anything out there right now, uh, the surface uh, texturing is pretty smooth. It's got more of a matte finish. Um, it doesn't really have much grip to it at all, but that's not necessarily something that is a good or bad thing. And then there is some reinforcement kind of fused material here on the lateral side in the form of what appears to be a pretty random pattern. You can see there's a little bit of a triangle break in the actual material itself. Uh, and this will add some reinforcement to that lateral side of the shoe uh, because obviously the synthetic material is quite thin. So they felt a need to reinforce that lateral side. The medial side though, you can see it does have kind of an awkward cutoff point, very reminiscent of what you're gonna find from the uh, Messi 16.1 as well as the X16.1 where you think they would have done something more seamless. They could have made the upper more one piece, but they chose not to. We did get obviously more of a one piece upper 
on the uh, Under Armour Clutch Fit, or sorry, both the Clutch Fit as well as the Speed Form. So I'm not sure why they didn't do it here, but this part right here where it's kind of like a grayish black color, this is a different type of synthetic that doesn't feel cheap, but it does feel cheaper than the synthetic in red at the front of the shoe, and it is a little bit thicker as well. So that's why it doesn't have the same reinforcement piece on the medial side that we see here on the lateral side. But all in all, the upper feels okay as far as thinner synthetics go. The tongue is a thin synthetic material as well, similar to this actual material on the medial side. Laces run down the middle, as you guys can see. So pretty standard in that regard. And then basically everything else is just a direct carryover from the Speedform model. So it's got the same low cut. And then on the inside, you have their Speedform technology, which I have the other shoe where I remove the laces. So you can see the inside of the shoe a little bit more easily. So at the very top of the heel liner, it's a synthetic suede material. And then they put a rubberized strip, kind of a silicone strip at the very, very top that just does that little bit of extra to keep your heel locked in place. I really like that particular feature on the speed form and they've carried it over here on the spotlight. Um, inside you have their speed form technology, which essentially is a seamless liner. So all the neon yellow that you see from the heel liner just flows right into the um, insole area, the bottom of the shoe where there isn't actually insole, there's nothing to remove. The entire liner is completely seamless and entirely one piece. There's no stitching, there's nothing to rub on and it makes for what I would say is a very connected feel to the shoe. It's the best way to describe it. You really feel like you're sitting as close to the top of the sole plate as possible, which gives a nice sense of stability. That's, for me, the main reason why you would go for something like the Speed Form here. Um, the material itself in neon yellow is kind of like a really, really soft padded mesh material. At the very bottom, you can see it's got a little bit of a bump in the heel. That is kind of like a memory foam type material that does take the place of what would normally be an insole. And then it, it kind of is thinner around that point and then it gets thicker again, running through the midfoot and all the way through the forefoot and toe box area, where again, you have this very, very soft kind of plush memory foam that does give this shoe a pretty unique look, uh, feel on your feet. Um, you're also gonna notice these little black kind of uh, four-sided shapes. I'm not sure exactly what you would call those, uh, but those are little kind of synthetic suede pieces that they've uh, put on top of the liner. We did not have this on the speed form. And they're there basically just to grip the bottom of your sock, prevent any kind of excess slippage on the bottom of your foot. I didn't find that slippage was an issue in the speed form that obviously didn't have these little grip elements. But as soon as I put these on, I immediately noticed them. And I will say that it is a nice improvement. I like how it feels and it does help to, again, have your sock grip the inside of the shoe a little bit better and prevent any kind of excess slippage. Um, so that's a nice little kind of innovation or minor change that they've made coming from the original speed form. The rest is identical. You have an external heel counter, which is made from a PBAX material that has some really good size to it. And then of course the bottom is a TPU plastic uh, construction, it has some good thickness, good flexibility as well. Um, it does have, they tell this as a feature, the kind of anatomically shaped toe area where it does have a little bit of curvature here in the, all the toe spots, if you will. Uh, but that's not something that, again, you really notice inside the shoe at all, similar to the split toe design that Nike talks about on the Hypervenoms. Uh, uh, with that said, the stud pattern, again, unchanged coming from the speed form, uh, which is not an issue at all. This is a pretty good stud pattern, in all honesty. It's kind of a good blend of grip as well as kind of maneuverability, that freedom to twist and turn. They are obviously bladed studs in shape. Uh, but they also have kind of rounded edges to them. They have some decent length. This, of course, being the firm ground variation. And again, traction was definitely not a weak point on this particular shoe. It's nothing groundbreaking as far as stud patterns go, but it works pretty effectively, and it's not something that I really ever had any complaints about. Uh, so a nice carryover, again, coming from that speed form model. So all in all, the Spotlight is not necessarily a giant leap forward, uh, I would say I definitely think this synthetic is a little bit nicer than what we found on the previous Speedform model. Uh, but other than that, it's more or less just a slight tweak to the model that it's replacing, which again, isn't necessarily a bad thing. As far as weight is concerned, I thought we'd compare the Spotlight to the Speedform, the model that it's replacing, to see if there's any significant weight difference between the two, given the design changes that Under Armour has made. So I'm gonna weigh both shoes for you today in real time using this scale. Keep in mind, these are both in brand new condition and both the exact same size, 9.5 US. So this is a very fair comparison. 
We'll start off with the Under Armour Speed Form, throw it on the scale, and you can see that they weigh in at 7.6 ounces, the equivalent of 216 grams. So remember those numbers, change the scale back to ounces, pull these off, and we'll throw on the Under Armour Spotlight, and you can see that they weigh in at eight ounces exactly the equivalent of 227 grams. So you're talking about a 0.4 ounce weight difference between these two shoes with the Spotlight actually weighing a little bit more despite being the newer model. I know a lot of people get confused when a new shoe comes out and weighs more than the previous model, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. The weight difference between these two shoes is quite minimal and honestly, I don't think it's a super noticeable thing when the shoes are on your feet. But with that said, uh, it's still a shoe that is going to offer a nice lightweight feel in general. Is it the lightest thing that you can get? Absolutely not. But it's light, it does have a thin upper, it fits pretty well, and it does have a very unique type of sensation on your feet because of that one-piece speed form liner. So again, if you're looking for something that's different and the features of the Spotlight meet what you're looking for, it is definitely a pretty decent shoe overall. Aesthetically, I know not everybody is a big fan of Under Armour shoes in general. I think the Spotlight is, again, gonna be one of those shoes that some people like and some people absolutely hate. As far as what my opinion is, I don't mind the look of the shoe. I personally prefer the look of the speed form if I'm being 100% honest with you guys. And the one aspect of this design that does kind of bother me is this seam right here. I know they tried to make it kind of a cool hidden thing and changing the color of the upper and changing the material as well. But to me, it just looks like something that's really, really cheap on a shoe that does cost $200 plus. Same thing goes for Adidas with the, the seam that they have in that pretty much exact same spot. I just don't think it should be there. I feel like uh, it's something they could have designed around, but who knows, I could be completely wrong on that. Um, nonetheless, the shoe itself, I, I don't mind the overall look. Uh, this is the bright red colorway with the neon yellow and black accents. As you can very clearly see, the red for the upper is actually a really, really nice shade. Uh, it's a nice bright red, kind of exactly what you would expect from a red shoe. Uh, you have the Under Armour logo, which again, I know not everybody likes the look of, but I don't mind it on this particular shoe, especially the placement kind of closer to the toe here on a diagonal. You have one more Under Armour logo in neon yellow on the medial side, right in the midfoot. Black tongue, black laces. Uh, you do have the Spotlight branding right there in neon yellow going across the top of the tongue. The Under Armour written out there on the heel, which I actually think looks pretty cool black heel counter, and then of course, uh, the neon yellow and red in the sole plate with a nice kind of sparkle to it. Hopefully you guys can see that. It's within the actual plastic itself, um, which kind of is a, is a cool little extra detail, but that's pretty much it as far as the overall look of the shoe is concerned. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. Do you like how they look? Why or why not? And with that being said, let's move on to the on-feet portion of the video so we can get a better idea as to how these shoes fit and of course what the sizing is like. All right, so here is a look at the Under Armour Spotlights on feet. On my left foot, I have the stock black laces that come with the shoes. And on my right foot, I have a pair of black and red Crackle SR4U replacement laces. If you're interested in a pair of replacement laces for yourself, the website to go to is www.sr4ulaces.com. You find a direct link to that website down below in the description of this video. Now, in terms of how these things fit and feel on feet, out of the box, the material does have a little bit of firmness to it. It reminds me a little bit of the uh, previous speed form, but a little bit thinner and I would argue a little bit more flexible in general. It is something that does soften up after some wear time. The one aspect of this shoe that I don't love out of the box in terms of how they feel on feet is the actual support cage on the lateral side of the upper. You feel a little bit of a pressure point pretty much right here, at least I do, just from the firmness of the actual support cage itself. Um, and it's not necessarily something that feels uncomfortable, but it bothers me a little bit. And, and it's something that for me personally, it didn't necessarily go away completely. It did get more comfortable as I wore them in and the material kind of softened up a little bit, but it is something that I did notice throughout my entire experience with this shoe. And again, something that I don't personally love about uh, the, the spotlight in general. The overall shape of the shoe, given that it does have the same sole plate um, as what you found on the speed form, it seems to be a little bit tighter, especially through the midfoot um, overall. Um, they just made the shoe a little bit more narrow. It doesn't necessarily have that same kind of anatomical shaping to it like we saw on the speed form, which 
I think more people would probably prefer the shape of this particular shoe, but I just prefer the fit and general feel of the Speedform in general, just because it had a little bit of extra width uh, in the toe box, forefoot, as well as midfoot area. I just found those to be a little bit more comfortable than I do the Spotlight. Um, this lacing system runs pretty deep, so you're able to get a nice snug fit overall. The fit in the heel is really nice with that kind of seamless one-piece Speedform heel liner. And overall, I really like the feel of the Speedform system in general, and that again, you sit directly on top of the sole plate. You feel very, very connected to the shoe just because uh, you don't have materials that can move around under your feet. Um, as far as the width of the shoe is concerned, it is a tighter fitting shoe overall, a little bit tighter than what we got from the Speedform. Uh, so if you do have wide feet, probably not the best option for you, but if you don't mind a tighter fit, you're unlikely to have any issues. And as far as sizing goes, uh, Under Armour shoes tend to run about a half size small, so I did go a half size up in these as I usually do. And uh, the fit is pretty much perfect. So if you are looking to order a pair of these for yourself, I would recommend going a half size up. Normally I wear a 9 US, in Under Armour I bump it up to a 9.5, and the fit and the length is absolutely perfect. So again, if you are looking to order a pair, I would recommend going a half size up in order to achieve the proper fit. All right guys, that is it for my review of the Under Armour Spotlight. It's a shoe that has some interesting qualities about it, the speed form concept I'm a big fan of, but the upper I can't say that I particularly love with this shoe. I think I personally do prefer the previous speed form, but again, this shoe does have quite a few redeeming qualities. It just depends on what you're looking for. Now, if you guys are interested in more info, be sure to check out the review page on my website. That'll be the very first link down below in the description of this video. On that page, you'll find the high quality images of this exact pair. That'll give you a better idea as to how they actually do look in person. And you'll also find buy it now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes. We'll be able to pick these guys up below their normal $220 retail price. So again, if you're interested in a pair, first link down below, go ahead and check it out. If you have any questions at all regarding the Under Armour Spotlight, be sure to leave them down below in the comments, and I definitely will get an answer out to you. If you enjoyed today's video, found it helpful and informative, be sure to support it with a like. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all my social media information linked in the description as well. Other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video, and as always, thanks for watching.